I would say actually this is a video rather different to most of my other ones. So this is a speed painting tutorial. Now I'm saying this in um, quotation marks as this is a very fast way and a very efficient way to create a good looking battle ready. Now I'm putting emphasis on battle ready miniature. So you can see we're starting over with corn red. Not Mephiston red, it's corn red as the first base coat, but we have to spray paint it with Avalon black beforehand. So Chaos black or any black spray paint. So you paint over it with corn red. This is a very you do it very watered down because we do not want any um, uh, brush marks. You uh, the skin on any brush marks. Those brush marks really destroy this part. So as you paint over it, it I took think about ten coats of thin moat amount until I got this. Now we go over with Mephiston red onto this layer. Um, what Mephiston red does with the corn red is over the areas where you're basically dry brushing it. But you're not you you're leaving quite you're leaving it quite moist, but you're not adding that much water to it. So you can see how it went to my hands. You want that consistency or the consistency going onto the model. So you dry brush it basically onto the model, but putting a lot of power into it. And how you do it, how you do this is you get a tissue and you just brush it along for about two seconds. And now whilst you're going along, the areas that the Mephiston red doesn't go into. Um, it creates a darkened red zone. So you can see um, underneath them is quite dark. So that's the area where the red's not picking up. What this does is it creates an illusion to the looker that the sun, is, that they've got shadows appearing on their armor, which is probably what you want to go for and makes it it's a good battle ready technique to do. So, I need to tell you again Mephiston Red, you're going to run out of this. Because during this commission, I was running out of Mephiston Red, right, right, left, and corner. That's not the same, but I'm going with it. And I think I went through about three pots of Mephiston Red. Only one pot of Corn Red. So this was a whole Dark Imperium box. So you get go through quite a bit of this. Um, so yeah, you just dry brush it continuously. Um, so it's, it's, a, it's a very judgy way that you're going to do this, is... You can see that's what it was when it was corn red and this is the comparison to Mephiston red. So you can see the shadows have appeared from this model. So you can see in some of the recessed areas. And now we're going to hobble over to add, adding in um, Agrax Earthshade. Now, I started off with Agrax Earthshade incorrectly and you will find out why. Agrax, the way I was doing this was the way I do my tech marines. Well, I start with corn red for my tech marine, so it's a completely different paint scheme. But what you what I what you do is you don't water down your um Agrax Earthshade, or you water it down to ten drops of Agrax Earthshade and one water drop, like that comparison. There's barely any watering down needed. And you just go over the whole model. This helps you in A in time, and anyway looks nice. But if you wanna go really nice looking, be um be very conservative with it. Don't be liberal with your positioning of how you put it all on. Be conservative, go only into the points that you want it to be seen, the recesses. But I'm doing it like this because this is a speed painting tutorial and the person, wanted, and the person from my commission I did it as a speed painting one because he was going to paint an army like this as well. So I didn't want to make it too difficult but I didn't want to make it really, really bad so it would have been a waste of money. But you can see you go with the whole model, and I'm using, I think, a medium base brush, brush, the equivalent, and that's, that is so, I'm going to probably show this comparison quite a bit, but in the next tweeny bit, I've actually, I was painting all the other models with this, this was done about two weeks ago, and you can see I said that you just dry brush over, you dry brush over your model with Mephiston Red after the Rackland Earthshade has finished. And what that does is because it makes it much darker with the Agrax Earthshade, as you can see here. You can see I'm pointing out with the brush points that are too dark for the actual model. So we go over again with your Mephiston Red. So you can see that pot was full at the beginning and it's 
gone quite chaotic. Now, I actually left a sound in it so you could hear a bit of how it's going, and I have now converted to using black gloves. I advise all, use gloves. You do not want your miniatures to have giant splodges. Gloves are a be the best thing to get. I think I got these for three quid for about 150 gloves. So if you do the math, that's 50 gloves a pound, which good, good. And now what the recesses did was it improved, like greatly improved, the way that the contrast of the dark to light regions has now happened, as it is um, enhanced a Mephiston red, so a light colour, all the way over to a dark colour. That's really good because it draws the attention away from those areas over to the lighter beams of light. Well, I'll show you in the next bit what I'm meaning by drawing you in for the lighter beams of light. Because it's what this model is mainly doing is creating a large illusion for the looker and to be battle ready. <laughs> it's, it's a quick easy technique. I think overall it took me 20 minutes to paint. That was batch painting. This is the part where it improves that illusion that you have, that contrast, if I can say, of the miniature from the light recesses down to the bottom. And as well, this improves your way that you do highlighting. So I know most people who do speed painting battle ready armies struggle with highlighting. I know I did when I started the hobby off. This is for people that haven't had any prior knowledge. You can see it shows an orange layering inside of it. It's quite not too bringing out, but it still is a light layer, uh, side layer, onto the model. Um, now that's, the armour has now been done, basically. I'm going to stop talking and make the speed painting go along. Um, all the paints will be listed inside what are being used, so I'll talk when, I'm, when it's at the next bit, so see you guys. So I'm back, and this part is still part of the speed painting section, but you're now having to base the gun parts, your parts of the gun. Now how you do this is you have a watered down Abaddon Black, the Halo, I think it's, I think it's called Negro Black. I think it is. Now you can hear a plane flying by. Yeah, I live near an airport. <laughs> but, you go over it with Abaddon Black. Um, what this does is it's just um, gun casing. So you can see on most guns, you have the metallic parts and you have the casing around it. So that it does, it, the heat, I think it's because the heat. Now, I'm not a gunologist, I just like to look at guns. <laughs> but I think it's just to um, have it so the heat doesn't go out. Um, what we'll do is we'll paint as well the grip of a gun. Pistol I mean, not gun. Gun means naval. But we'll paint the pistol off. Pistol grip. Because the what well, that part, the pistol grip, you don't really need to do. That's more if you want to go for a higher tail one. But um it's nice on the model. Much nicer to have that on a model rather than having nothing. Um we're then gonna go over lead vulture. The parts that you do it is the backpack and the gun parts that you haven't done in Abaddon Black. You as well do on the mask for breathing apparatus. I'm going to put you back over to the speed painting part, so see you all. I will come back when you're in the next part.
So after you finish off your guns, you will now move over to using Nern Oil. Nern Oil is a blackish wash that is very good for most miniatures. I use it for my yellow guys with conjoined or separate sepia, but that's for another video for another speed painting tutorial. But what you're going to do is you're going to go over all the metallic regions of your model. What this does is like your normal model, so the actual big boy, like the rack, um, Agrax Earthshade, it creates um, a separation, I'd say, of the recesses between the arm, with, between the gun. Um, this looks much nicer. And I've sort of so many memes about which say that basically Nern Oil is something that improves your model so much. Now, you use any white paint, I'm using white scar because that's got a high consistency. And you can see I've actually overlapped a teeny bit over. If you overlap over, don't care. It's a speed painted one and you can always go over with some Mephisto red. But we're going to use, I don't know if it's no longer being sold. But there are so many different substitutes. This is Warpstone um, Glow. This is a glaze paint. It's very good as it creates a glowing look. And it's my favourite green there is. But you can always create something like that. Um, the closest thing I can think is get Moot Green and make it become a wash consistency. After doing that, you're at the stage where you no longer speed paint. This part you can now end the video if you don't want to speed paint. But we're now moving over to the secondary speed painting. So adding more look to model. We're gonna go over with I'm using Vermin Brown here. Or it's, it's one of the really old paints they don't sell anymore. But you can use Moonfang Brown for this. So we're gonna go over all the areas where there are bags or where there are gun section, where the gun carrier is, so it's too where that is, you can go over sections. This is a very, um, this is a skill that you can put everywhere basically. It's just brown. Brown is an amazing paint, as you can always look at brown and be like, ah, I know what brown is with that one. Um, and you go over it. So the next part, I, I'm right now watching a video because I did it almost I said only two weeks ago. Okay. Yeah. So we're going to go over again with Warpstone because I felt it wasn't bright enough and I go over with my thumb. What that does is remove the amount of green on it, uh, just making it still look nicer. P.S. I know one of the eyes is really ugly looking. It does get fixed at the end of the video so whoever's getting triggered by it, it won't be triggering you for that long. Um. So the next bit is adding Zandri Dust. Nope, nope. Bugman's Blow. Sorry, it looked like Xandry Dust on my screen player. Um, Bugman's Blow. I like to use actually a brown highlighting colour. Now highlighting, if you if you don't know, is basically just do the edge panelling and stuff like that. It is a very difficult skill. I'm still trying to master it. It's a very difficult thing to fully master. But after you can master it, it's pretty good. Um, what this does is, as like washes, it di shows differences in the armour and highlights angles. So what you can then do with this is create lighter regions and make that go darker and darker from that. So you can see it actually turns out really, really nice. I'm going to skip over now to... Uh... Okay, so you're going to go over with Dawnstone. So you're going to say going to skip so much, but you go over with Dawnstone and you're highlighting the bone to create a nicer look of texture on top, for texture and look. Um, what Dawnstone does is it's very dark armor um, grey, so it complements the darkness of Abaddon Black, which is my, I would say, my favourite paint is Dawnstone. I use it for dioramas and for painting. So the hardest bit I was supposed to do with the gun is painting where his arm is. Um, uh, and that's, if you don't want to do that, just keep it red. There's not much hassle. So if someone gets irritated about that, it's not worth playing with them. They're by my French and arse, and if they get peed off about that, it's more detail. 
Next bit is um, plank steel. You can use iron breaker, but I'm just a fan of my lighter, right? Uh, my lighter silvers for factory finished units. So you use I use um, the steel color. What you do is you is again highlight the power packs, power packs, and all the other regions on the miniature. You do that as well in any metallic areas. You edge highlight all the parts of it. Now I'm going to probably skip my voice, but here yeah, is what I said. The fist and red comes in, and you're going to go over every single region, every single region, every single area that is out of place with its color. You may be overlapped, maybe just painted wrongly. Whoever cares, who cares? We do that. Now, I forgot to add in actually to this video. Save it in a second. But retributor armor, you add to it. I'm using Retributor Armor, you go over um, that sig um, those signatures of the model, and that creates a nice look. Then what you do is you go over that part with Adrax, essentially. Um, Adrax I have saved. I would say I'm very sorry, the footage of this last bit was lost. Um, but what you, I'll probably put up a slideshow of what it looked like, other, other miniatures I painted. But what happens is, um, for, I didn't do this bit, but for parchment, you would do sand you dust, you wait for that to dry, then you do separate sepia, wait for that to dry, and then you go over that with screaming skull. I've done a tutorial for skulls on my video, on my YouTube, just follow that. Then you go over with Abaddon Black, after you've finished all that steps that's dried, and with the Abaddon Black you do little scribe marks. Now after you finish that, I like to use Blood Angels, go Moot Green, and inside of it, go Caliban Green. Because I like green and red, that's just my ideal colours to complement it. But I know they're actually not the colours to complement it. But you go that, the good alternatives to use are purple, yellow, and blue. So those are nice colours to go along with it. Black as well would be cool, but it, as Chapter Master Valorak always says, the rule of cool is the best rule. Um, so yeah, that's all about this model. If you liked it, please like the video. If you want to um, support the channel, please subscribe to me or join my Discord. Um, I have two friends who as well do YouTube. They are the Weatherpig and Spect. They're both a YouTube channels, as you always, are located in the description of this video. I will not be uploading videos for the next couple of days, maybe a week, as I have got a meme I'm making, but I underestimated how long they take to make, and with my poor editing skills it's going to take a long time. I as well have got assignments upon assignments to do, so I'm struggling to get all that, I'm um, struggling to do work with YouTube, so as always, work takes more priority over YouTube, so Bye bye all, this is Terra Chicks Wargaming, out, have a nice day.